from above. It's Ted and Liza. Good morning. And we're happy to come into your home again and give you an important message. Remember, the whole point of this show is to help you to have a relationship with God, help you discover what's going on beyond the physical. And we're always talking about spiritual things. We're always talking about what messages and guidance is coming in from above. We have another great show. That's why we are View From Above. View directly from heaven, bringing view from above to your homes, to your places of work. I don't know where you're at right now. Maybe you're driving. Maybe you're just sitting there with your family or just having communication with us. We're excited about it because God is in the house and the Spirit of God right now is working for you. So let's begin. We have an amazing show yeah. prepared for you. Let's begin. Absolutely. Yeah, we're working on a series uh, called Live to Believe. And as we were talking about last week in part one, we talked about even our personal experiences, and that's what we're always relating to. We're not talking from theological ideas or theory. We're talking about our personal experiences with God and how we got to where we are. And last week we talked a little bit about going from being a, an atheist to being a believer, believing that there's something beyond the physical, uh, more than just this physical body. And we kind of shared a little bit about our experiences because both of us went through this journey before we knew each other. We right. went through this journey and we weren't seeking God, but we were seeking happiness. We were seeking truth. And so we talked about that in part one. And uh, we talked a little bit about how we come to realize that there is something beyond the physical. But in part two now, we're talking about exploring religion and spirituality. Because one of the things I realized is when I first realized there was something bigger than me, something beyond the physical, uh, that left me with even more questions. I remember that's when I really started to ask people, well, how how does this work? What happened? And people could not answer what experience, what I went through in my experience. They couldn't tell me what was going on. And suddenly now all this other stuff is open to me. I'm seeing beyond the physical and I'm having spiritual experiences. Nobody can explain it to me. Nobody. And, and it was really where I was asking people and I was questioning and really wanting to know. And I think this happens with you too. You have more questions than ever when suddenly you start to realize, wait a minute, there's more going on here than just the physical. I think a lot more questions come up. Now, the same thing happened to me. That's how from non-believer I became a seeker. Same mm -hmm. thing happened to me. We started seeking answers. We were looking for happiness. We started seeking answers. But my experience is nobody could explain either because it was just so outrageous and to everybody I knew they could not believe it some people thought I was crazy right. you know, I, at that one point I thought I was crazy I, I, yeah, you I did asked, too I right that too. so but it transported us into a different dimension and we didn't know back then but we were closer to God than ever right. it just happened immediately and that's what we're trying to convey to you and that's what we're trying to write on your heart today that all the changes that you're expecting in your life, they don't have to take years. You don't have to be sad for 20 years or depressed for 10. Mm -hmm. You don't have to struggle. The change could happen immediately, just like that. Because yeah. as soon as you transport it into the dimension above the physical world, things begin to happen in a supernatural way. And that's what you will be receiving today. Now, God gave me some interesting guidance for today, and he did it in an interesting way this morning. Now, I don't, I don't think that I remember everything, but I'm pretty good. But what I do to compensate for not remembering everything... Well, you're better than me. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you there. Uh, but one of the things I do to help compensate for not remembering everything is I, I pride myself on putting things back where they belong. That way, when I need to get something, I can just go to where it's supposed to be you're very and, organized, and find yes. it. Well, this morning that wasn't the case. I remember I was looking for something and I went into the bathroom and I searched through all the cupboards and I couldn't find it and I know it was there because I remember you buying and buying it and I so I went through the second bathroom and looked through it. Well, now I came back to the first one, I looked even closer and as I'm searching the second bathroom for the second time now even more thoroughly, it dawns on me, wait a minute, um, I think it's in your nightstand. <laughs> Sure enough, I went in there. It was right where I, where I had put it. Uh, but the message came to me. God spoke to me and he said, you won't find what you're looking for if you're looking for it in the wrong place. Very deep. Very <laughs> like, deep. I was like, I can't argue with you there, God. And I remember I was kind of grumbling because, you know, when, when that happens, it doesn't happen you to me. You get agitated. So I was everybody. Like, what, what is going on? Why can't I find this? But he gave me that message. Well, 
pretty soon you asked me for some vitamins. You said, can you pull these vitamins out of the cupboard? And I remember I went to the kitchen cupboard where we keep the vitamins and I started looking and I looked through all the shelf where the vitamins were and I didn't see them and I thought, okay, I looked on the higher shelf because I thought maybe they got up there. And finally there was one shelf left in that cupboard and it was with teas and coffees and I was thinking, can't be on that shelf, but I looked anyway and I didn't find them and I'm thinking, this is the second time this morning this is happening and again the word of the Lord came to me and he said, you won't find what you're looking for if you're looking for it in the wrong, in wrong place. place. And I said, okay, where could it be? And then he reminded me there's a little shelf, a little cupboard over to the side where we sometimes, the vitamins you're using regularly, you put them. And I went over there and sure enough, it was right there. there. It was. And so this became, as God did this, I said, well, God, and I rem realized that I'd asked God a question earlier in the morning. And I said, God, I know there's something missing from this message that we're working on. What is it? And this is how he gave me the guidance. And the whole point of this story is what God was trying to explain, get through to me. And he was giving me guidance through these experiences that I was having. Is this is what it's like for you too. When we get to that realization that there's something beyond the physical. And now we start to explore. If we're looking in the wrong place. We won't find what we're looking for. And so I felt that this is why it was really important today this part two is called exploring religion and spirituality because I think a lot of people, they come to the realization there's something more beyond the physical, but then they can get caught up and lost in so many different ways. And I, I see this, especially in Los Angeles and California. Uh, you know, if we look at spirituality, there are so many, and I want to talk about what is spirituality, but there are so many ways that people see spirituality and, you know, I like to joke that people say they're spiritual if they have a pair of yoga pants in, in L.A. And, and it's almost, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but yes. it's almost that bad, isn't Very it? Very close. Here it is. Uh, we want to kind of magnify the spirituality for you. What does it mean to be spiritual? Because we do live in Los Angeles, in mm -hmm. California. For you people who don't live in Los Angeles, for you probably it's a little different. But here... Everybody thinks that they're spiritual. And I have people come to us and say, Oh, my friend, my friend, she's so spiritual. She's so spiritual. And, they say, and I usually say, uh, Define it for me. What does, what does she mean? do? What, what yeah. does she do? What does it mean that she's so sp spiritual? Oh, she went to this conference and she went to that conference and she just came back from this seminar and, and she's been doing it for 10 years. And mm -hmm. how is her life? Oh, she's still struggling. She's not in the relationships. Uh, career is not happening. And and I'm, and I'm trying to say, repeat it to me again. H how long has she she's been doing that? For 10 years. But she's very spiritual. She's very spiritual. Things are not happening mm -hmm. for her. So going to conferences, taking yoga classes, uh, going from one speaker to another does not make you spiritual. Right. That's why your life is not changing if you just keep going and seeking for the next big name, uh, trying different modalities, trying different things. It's good that you're trying. It's good that you're seeking, but you're probably seeking in the wrong place. I love how God gave you the message in the morning. Yeah. And see, that's how God speaks to you. That's how God speaks to us sometimes. You should not get frustrated when God gives you experiences. Instead, what we're teaching you time and time again, ask. Who do you ask? You ask God. You ask the Spirit to clarify the message for you. God, why am I going through this experience right now? That's how spiritual happens. So what is spiritual? What is spiritual? Well, and and I, I want to point out to get more specific too, because sometimes people say they're spiritual because they're taking a yoga class or because they're doing karate, or because they're taking a wealth building seminar. A wealth building seminar could make you wealthy, but it doesn't make you spiritual. Taking a yoga class could help you with your fitness, but it doesn't make you spiritual. Um, you know, going to a seminar that motivates you could get you motivated, but it doesn't make you spiritual. And this is something people have to realize because in LA it's become such a buzzword and everybody wants it, but that's not what spiritual is. And so what is spirituality? Well, the way we look at spirituality, it's about developing a personal relationship with God. It means that you are listening and receiving guidance from God, that he is leading you and guiding you on your path on a day-to-day -day basis. Much like today, 
I woke up, I asked God, and I said, something's missing I need to talk about. I don't know what it is. God knows more than we do. So that's why I asked him. And then he created situations to teach me, to lead me to the answer, because I was busy getting ready. I wasn't right. paying attention. Right. But he caught my attention. And when I asked again, what's going on? He said, if you're not looking in the right place, you won't, you won't find, find it. what you're looking for. Right. And so this really, you know, this is how God is working with us. And this is spirituality. It is the relationship with God, the Spirit of God on the inside that uh -huh. is leading us and guiding us to, to the ultimate life that was, was planned for us. The Spirit of God is on the inside. And the first step to becoming spiritual is receiving the Spirit of God. You're going to receive it today if you haven't yet. That is the first step to becoming spiritual. Then the Spirit starts guiding you. Then your spiritual senses, spiritual senses, open up and you right. start to see things, feel things, experience things on the level beyond physical. That's why we love dreams right. so much. Right. This is the easiest tool for you to navigate reality above the physical world. Because in your dreams, while you're asleep, your spirit is very active. And that's when your spiritual senses go to work. Mm -hmm. Your conscious mind is not there to interfere. Your spirit is extremely excited. That's now it's free. It could travel to heavens. It, it could experience different realms. But most importantly, it's trying to get you aligned with your destiny. Through this spirit, you find a way to enhance your life. Through this spirit, you find a way to live the life of purpose. Through this spirit, you will find the relationships you're looking for. But first, you need to receive this spirit and then navigate by the guidance from the right. spirit of God, right? That's what makes you spiritual. Because we're talking about going from being a physical person to, to understanding that there is a spiritual existence beyond the physical. That's part of us. Our spirit is actually larger than our physical body, our physical life. And when we start to realize that that spiritual level is actually what is manifesting and creating and leading us, now we can start living in a different way. That's why I'm saying, you know, I'm saying that these courses and these seminars and these classes that you're taking are just doing more physical stuff. It's just more practice of working the physical body, working the physical mind, but it's not helping you to reach out beyond the physical. When we had our awakening, and that's what it was, it was an awakening to something beyond the physical, we now realize there is a spiritual level. I didn't know anything about it. I had denied it for so many years. Suddenly I became aware there's something beyond. What is that? I, I asked people what it is. They couldn't answer for me. I, I Much like you might have done, I started trying some of these courses because I thought, okay, maybe if I take a yoga class, maybe if I, I try this, I'm going to understand what spirituality is. It didn't help me. It was good for my flexibility, but it didn't help me to really start to open my spiritual senses more, to start to also understand and perceive what is coming in from the spiritual because it's different than perceiving in the physical. And so this is really what's imp what we're needing at that point when we awaken. We are needing to now learn. And as Liza said, one of the great things that I love is dreams. In dreams, God is speaking to us in our dreams, and he is making us aware of the spiritual level of your being. He is helping you to see that there is something beyond the physical. And if you start to work with your dreams, you can start to open up very quickly to realizing and using those spiritual senses so that God can guide you throughout your day. Having said that, when you meditate, you might receive the Spirit by definition. That's what happened to me, mm -hmm. right? I didn't yep. expect it. The Spirit of God just landed into me, right? And I started breathing and I received God. I just didn't know what it was. So it might happen during your meditation or the yoga class, but then you need to learn what to do with it. Then you need to realize Yes, that was the Spirit of God that landed into me. I need to learn the new way of living, navigating reality. So whatever place you're at right now, I want to assure you, you are at the right place. What we're trying to tell you here, that you need to start learning, paying attention to what's happening around you, but most importantly, listening to the Spirit within. And that's what we're going to teach you. And that requires... That's what makes you spiritual. Navigating the physical life through the spiritual reality. Navigating by the guidance that comes from 
the spirit of God from and above. from above <laughs> and using the power, the supernatural power of God that he already brought into you. For that, you need some learning to do. But again, you won't be able to do it through teachings. It's good in the beginning and saturating yourself with good messages, good people, good information. It's all important. But your most important role right now, most important thing that you can do for yourself is learn how to hear the Spirit of God, how to receive the guidance, and how to do it, how to apply it to your life. And why do we want to use that? Because that spiritual power it gives us authority and power over this physical life, over the problems of your life, over sickness and disease. The spiritual and everything coming through it gives you the power to overcome and conquer the issues of your life. To bring in divine love, true love that now can flow through, that leads you to your perfect partner. That's how that it happens. that feels good. And so this is what you have to understand is why do I want to open to the spiritual? You know, okay, I, okay, I've had this experience and now I'm starting to believe there's something beyond the spiritual. Why is that important? Why should I follow that? Because this gives you the power and it gives you the solutions to overcome the problems of your life. You want your life to change. It won't change by just taking another class that teaches you more about the physical. It'll change by starting to open up and hear the spiritual so you can use the supernatural power that has always been yours and always you've had access to it. But now you've awakened to the opportunity to start to use that, utilize it. Sounds good, Ted. So we kind of covered a little bit what spiritual means, especially for our L.A. people, yeah. right? Now, let's dwell into the religion. Yes. Because that's what people say about us. You guys are not spiritual. You're religious because you talk about the Bible, you meditate on the Bible, and you talk about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, you talk about <laughs> Jesus. We so must... that kind of takes spirituality out of it, and then you immediately are kind of put into a different kind of uh, uh, group of people that are supposed to be called religious. Okay, so what what is religious? What is it that we classify religion to be? Because we're saying we're not religious, we're spiritual. So what is what is religious? To me, religion is an institution with hierarchies, with middlemen who is telling you what to do. You don't teach what is about God and what is God through the Spirit of God, but somebody else comes as a leader and tells you what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do. Usually it's very fear-based. Usually it has a lot of rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Usually it's keeping you inside this institution. And we're talking about all religions. All we're religions. talking about all we're, religions. Yes, and I don't think God created religion. God created and gave you this Spirit to be one with you, right. okay? To me, religion is divisive. To me, religion is putting tags on people, grouping them together so they can fight against and, each and other. And it's a very corporate, I mean, religions are very corporate institution that's cold, um, you're not having, and there's a middleman between you and God, which I believe that God wants us to have a personal relationship with him. with him. He wants to speak to us and give us that guidance, but if there's somebody between you and God, if you're putting if you're putting something between you, now you're not hearing from him. You're listening to what they're telling you, but <clears throat> the only way you can really have change in your life is by encountering God personally. I mean, one moment encounter with God can change your life totally and completely. I know because that's what happened to me. That's why my total systems of beliefs changed on that day. I was awakened to the spiritual. But that wouldn't have happened if I was just talking to a middleman. And it doesn't matter what religion it is. There's always that middleman telling you what God is like. And as I learned growing up, you know, because I, I didn't just go from atheist to being a believer. I went from religion to being an atheist to being a believer. Because right. when I was a kid, when I was a child growing up, my parents took me to a church where it was hellfire and brimstone was God. God was a punisher. God was, you know, he was looking for every mistake you were going to make. And, and you knew that you were, you were bad from the time you were born. You were a bad seed. This is how God was portrayed to me, you know. And this was totally religion. There was nothing about... I wasn't taught how to hear from God. I wasn't taught how to talk to God. I wasn't taught how to follow Him. I was told about this legality of the way it is, and this is what's going to happen to you. 
And I, this is what I was told. And I, when I, in hearing that, I was like, well, I don't want that. that and see, that that's what happens inside the religious institution. It's becoming very condemning, yeah. divisive, and judgmental. Right. See, that's what happens when people start thinking, oh, I am righteous or I'm trying to be and everything you're doing, you're doing it wrong. It's wrong. Right? Yeah. Because what they compare you to, to the set of rules that somebody told them to follow. Yes, maybe sometimes it comes from God, sometimes it doesn't, but your most important task in life is to receive the Spirit of God and ask God to reveal His mysteries to you. God is a revealer of mysteries. He wants to be with you. He wants to work with you. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be elevated to the next level. Now, we're not talking against the church because God loves groups of people he loves crowds not only crowds he loves excited crowds mm -hmm. when the spirit of god lands on one and this one can transfer it because the spirit of god could be transferred that's the secret to you so this when the spirit of god is transferred to many it amplifies that's when god is jumping with excitement so when people of god come together when they praise together when they receive great messages together mm -hmm. that's when me Miracles begin to right happen on, and somebody somebody kind of like what we're doing right now needs to say it and bring it to existence yeah. that's what the role of the preacher is of the teacher is to facilitate an experience an for you to, to give you God. an opportunity to encounter God yeah. face to face that what religion is not that what God is. That's what God is. Being mm -hmm. in your midst, creating miracles for you, creating breakthroughs. And yes, somebody like us, a preacher or a teacher, I would say a teacher, but mostly it's God. Because every time before we do our show or before we do any work that we do, we say, Lord, please work through us. Please speak through us. It's not your wor our words, but your words. It's not us who do the work. It's you who does the work. Right so everything we do, we do by the Spirit of God. I cannot do what I do by myself. Mm -hmm. And I believe that Ted cannot do what he does by himself. From ourselves, we cannot yeah. create miracles. But with God, coming together with our team, coming together with our people, reaching out to you, inviting you to be a part of our spiritual family, I believe we can do incredible things together. When good people, people of God, gather together in one accord, that's when miracle signs and wonders begin to manifest. And I'm excited about it. There, there are, I was reading about this this week, I just looked it up and it said there are 10,000 distinct religions worldwide. And, you know, so we're talking about that religion's not it. But I believe within those religions, there are people that ended up there because they're looking for answers. They have had an understanding Absolutely, that yes. there's something more going on. And I believe there are people in those religions who are still seeking God and are listening to God in spite of the, the doctrines that are being taught, in spite of the rigid kind of institutions that, that have been formed. I think there are people within there that are still receiving guidance from God and, and messages from Him, and He's speaking to them. And it's all how you use it, because as Liza mentioned earlier, you know, we pray, we meditate, we talk about Jesus, we talk about the Bible. Why, why do we do those things? Are those, are, those, are those not religious things that you're talking about? Absolutely not. Um, really what it is, is those are tools to help us communicate with God. Those are tools. When we're meditating, we're listening. We're honing our spiritual skills to hear from God. We're not tuning into nothingness. We're tuning into the voice of God. We're inclining our ear to him so that we can hear what he is saying to us. When we're talking about Jesus, Jesus was totally against religion. I don't believe he came to start a religion. No, he, he did, did not. not say anything about that. He came to create people who could do just like he was doing, hear from God, follow the guidance. Jesus always talked about he saw a vision. He knew something. How did he know it? God told him. He talked about doing something because God told him. He was inquiring before he did it. And, and this is God in a body showing us how, how to do are it. we supposed to do it. This is a, it's exactly. for all of, those, all of us who are seeking. And I remember in the beginning of my journey, 
I didn't want to have anything to do with the Bible. I didn't have, I want to have anything to do with Jesus. I didn't want to have anything to do with prayer. Same because with I had learned these from a religious perspective. But God began to teach me and show me that no, when these are used properly. And how do we use the Bible? We open it and we read a verse from it and then we meditate on that verse. And when we meditate on that verse, asking God for revelation... He gives revelations to us. He gives us realization. Every verse in the Bible is like a doorway unto heaven. Yes. When you different meditate different heavenly it, communities. And different aspects of God. Different aspects And when of God. you meditate on it, it opens that doorway that now allows you to step right into a, a different spiritual community. You begin to understand what's happening in the spiritual. You begin to receive guidance from God, revelation from Him. He can talk to you about what happens after death. He can talk to you about how does He work? How does His system work? And he starts to give you clarity on that. And that's what's really exciting. I know for the people that are searching, they want to have that personal experience. They want to have get understanding directly from the source. I know like when I call a big corporation, I don't want to talk to the guy, the operator on the phone if I'm having a problem. And they say, oh, I can't help you with that. Because I they always can't. say, I need to talk to your supervisor. Right. And if I say that enough times, I get to somebody who is high enough up they know exactly what to do to fix my problem. Well, the same is true here. I don't want to talk to the middleman. I don't want to talk to somebody who's, who's just answering the phones. If I'm going to get answers, I'm going to talk to God. I'm going to talk to the, the person at the very top. The one on the top. The one on the top. And when I ask those, you know, then when I ask the question, I get the information that's required for the situation right now to help me solve that immediately. So this is the big difference. See, it's not about the words, it's about what you do. God created a system for you. He created the environment for you. He created a connection for you to be in touch with Him 24-7. He wants to be one with you. That's why you receive His Spirit, so you become one. You merge with the Spirit John of God. Let me read John 16-7, what Jesus says. Yes. This is what Jesus was saying. He's saying, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Jesus is talking about sending a Helper. This is what you're talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. The Helper is the Spirit of God, or what we call the Holy Spirit. And see, the teacher was walking in the body, right? But he didn't want people to get attached to the teacher, to yeah. the physical teacher, right. to the physical the being. Mm -hmm. That's why going from one conference to another, from one teacher to another, is not going to get no. you where you want to be. It's good in the beginning when you need help, but then you need to train yourself to become one with the Spirit. So Jesus said right there, I leave the helper behind. The mm -hmm. supernatural helper, the helper can do anything and everything that you need to achieve the results that you want. The Spirit of God. Now the Helper is with you. The Helper will never leave you. Mm -hmm. Because it's not the physical person. It's forever. So as soon as you receive the Spirit, I want you to know, it will stay with you forever. You can never lose it. Now, I, I want to go back to my point from earlier that God was impressing upon me this morning about if you're not looking in the right place, you won't find what you're That's looking right. for. And this is important because when you start to open up to realize there's something beyond the physical, you've got to know where to look. And Jesus said something very important about that in Luke chapter 17, verse 21. He says, Nor will they say, See here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. See, people are going to tell you, Oh, the answer's over there. Go to this conference. Or they're going to tell you, the answer's over there. Go to this seminar. Or, oh, if you talk to this person, they've got the answer for you. Jesus is saying, they're going to keep telling you to go all these different places. He's telling you, no. The kingdom of God is within. In other words, the answers are within us. Right. And when we learn how to tune into our spiritual senses, turn on our spiritual ears, our spiritual eyes, we start to receive the guidance. It is pouring out from the inside of us when we are filled with the Spirit. And now God begins to speak, lead you. He gives you feelings. He gives you lessons. He gives you words. You see visions. And He starts to show you how to navigate in this physical life. 
But you've got to know where to look. If you're looking in the wrong place, you're not going to find the answers. He's saying it's within you. That's why we're, we had to, I wanted to clarify both spirituality and religion because there's a lot of people who've gotten, they've had the realization there's something beyond the spiritual. And then they've run off and got caught up in some sort of course or they got caught up in some religion or, or some supposedly spiritual practice and they got completely lost because they were looking in the wrong place. See, here's the thing. You also need to be in the teachable spirit. Yeah. When you're a spiritual person, the spirit will begin to mold you, okay? You are unique, okay? We are all unique individual. That's why you need individual, personal relationship with God or yeah. with His spirit. Absolutely. So, what is He's going to do if you are teachable and receptive to the messages from the Spirit of God, He will take you on a journey, right? But you need to constantly receive new way. And when you get locked in into the certain practice, a certain religion, and the Spirit keeps telling you, hey, you need to kind of separate yourself from this because I am preparing the new way for you or I'm taking you to the new level. And if you're locked Rigid, in you're rigid, rigidly yeah. in certain religious practice, attached to certain institution, it will not happen for yeah. you because there will be a conflict in, inside you. The Spirit of God is fluid. And you need to be teachable to grow from one level to another. What we say from glory to glory. And we're not telling you not to go to conferences, not to go to events. What we're telling you, ask God. Ask, ask the Spirit to prompt you. Mm -hmm. And if you need to be at the conference, hey, God will make sure you will He'll, get there. He will provide the money. He'll provide the way. He'll give you the guidance and tell you you need to be there. But, and if you receive that guidance, you need to be You'd there. You'd better go. Yeah. You'd better go take the For course. Sure. You'd better go and be part of the conference. Absolutely. Sometimes Absolutely. He, will, he will challenge you and he will tell you, you need to speak at the conference. Oh, that's when you're going to start you know, shivering and saying, oh God, I, I don't know how to do it. No, if the Spirit of God tells you to do something, that means he knows that you know and he knows that you will be able to. So that's what we're telling you. Navigate your life by the Spirit of God. And if he prompts you to do something, tells you to Absolutely. do something, act immediately. And we can't, I love that point you just made. We can't be rigid in our thinking and in our ways. See, the whole point of having a journey with God is so we can be transformed. Right. We want to be transformed. We want our lives to change. If you're rigid, if you're locked into a certain mentality or mindset, and this is really how I, the definition I give to religion, it is a rigid mentality where you are just locked in and you're refusing to change. And God wants us to transform. He wants to take us on a wonderful journey through our life so we can grow in love, so we can, you know, be transformed and experience the greatest things that he has provided for us. Jesus talked about he came to bring us liberty. Yes. And I believe he was talking about liberty, not only from a lot of things that usually talk about, you know, falsity and things, but I think also liberty from the rigid mindset to free us from that, you know, rigid mindset where you're stiff necked, where you're stubborn, where you're not willing to move forward. He wants to free you from that. When you get filled with the spirit, and this is what happened to me, I was rigid. Because people try to talk to me about these things, about the, the there were things beyond the physical. Right. I didn't want to hear, and I'd get angry, and I'd get stubborn. But when the Spirit of God filled me, and I couldn't explain that that's what it was when it first happened. I just knew something amazing transformed me. And I went from one day being the stiff, rigid guy, literally, to the next moment. The next day, I woke up and I started experiencing things in the spiritual, beyond the physical and I no longer was rigid. I wanted to know. I wanted to find the answers. And I was willing to listen now. And I was so glad that even today, I'm still looking. I'm still willing to listen to God like this morning. I'm glad that I'm still open to listening and hearing from God every day. Because when I get, if I get to the because point, I will not get Because it's our lifestyle. We yeah. cannot live without it. This is our life. We navigate our life by the Spirit. And when the Absolutely. Spirit tells us to do something, we do it right away. Why? Because we know that God knows the end from the beginning and He already prepared amazing outcome for us. We and trust, right? We created relationship. Absolutely. And when you have a relationship, you have a trust. Absolutely. So we trust God. We want to hear His prompting. We want to make sure we hear His voice. That's what makes our life exciting.
Yeah. Let's do the prayer. All right. Let's pray for you guys. Let's pray for for and, our people and, and so they can receive the spirit. I, I want you. If you're stuck, if you're if you're feeling stubborn and and you're really kind of feeling like you're just holding on for dear life to what you've got, it's time to let let go. It's time to begin to trust so that God can lead you. You can have an amazing life, but it requires us to choose. We have to choose to want to follow that every day. I had to choose today to ask God, what is missing? What do I need to talk about? And I had to choose to also listen. What are you saying to me? In order to hear that, it's and you great. Make that it takes all the stress day. off of off your shoulders, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Instead of kind of stressing out Racking and trying brain. to look <laughs> for answers, you know, and think, yeah. "Oh my god, oh my god, I'm not, I'm not gonna get this message delivered." No, God, I know you know it. Let me know it. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. if God knows, that means you can know too. So why don't you start the prayer? All right. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, you guys. Open your hearts. Because right uh, now, you're going to receive the seed of the Spirit of God. It will happen. And as you, as you think, as you make that choice to not be rigid, uh, remember what happened to me. I received the Spirit of God. Be opened right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. As your Spirit comes down upon these people that are choosing right now to let go of the old way. Thank you, Lord, that your spirit falls upon them in Jesus' name, that their ears are open, that their eyes are open, spiritual ears and spiritual eyes, and that their heart is open, that they are filled with your spirit, that they can now hear, hear what is to be heard and see what is to be seen by you, Lord, to see that there is more beyond the physical. Thank you, Lord, for awakening them. I believe right now that you are being awakened across the lands, everybody that's hearing this voice. The Spirit of God is moving upon you right now, and you are being awakened to a new life. You are being awakened to the power and the love of God. You're being awakened to the beauty of the life. You're being awakened to the things that God has set before you. The dreams are awakening in your life. Your spirit is beginning to jump you can feel his excitement and his power you know there's a purpose for you the light is being turned on right now for you because the power of god is going to work and i praise you in jesus name that you receive this right now Amen. amen and now in your heart just say i receive it god come into my heart i make you my lord and savior take my life Let's do something amazing with it. Let's do life together. And now open your eyes. I believe you received it. I believe your life is going to start changing right now, right here. All you have to do is listen. Listen and do. And from now on, you're a spiritual person filled with the Spirit of God, navigating the life in the physical through the spiritual eyes and the spiritual heart. Be blessed. We love you so much. We're so glad that we are able to come to you every Sunday. Please listen to these messages again and again. Share with your friends and family. It will change your life. It will change their lives. And start praying together. Start doing life together. God loves crowds. And now you receive the seed of the Spirit. Now share it. That's how excitement lands into your life. That's how the life of purpose begins. So we're excited to be here. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Join our Facebook group because Mm -hmm. it's growing exponentially. And we're talking about dreams and visions and correspondences and what God can do in your life. And most importantly, we're teaching you how to understand his promptings, how to hear his voice and understand what he's showing you and what he's telling you. So stick with us. We are here for you. Let's do life together. We love you and God loves you. Now, next week, 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, make sure you come back because we're going to have part three. We're going to talk to you about how we grew in God because it just didn't happen overnight. We're going to talk about that next week. So be here and we'll talk more on View from Above. Thank you.